Good morning. I'm Pastor Dan Goddard. It is Wednesday, April the 19th, and this is a Creator's Heart moment to share some scriptures, meditations, thoughts, and prayers with you. Today I want to talk about bringing thoughts into captivity. So it's a continuation of the theme of self-control, going deeper in self-control or the root or a foundation of self-control is to bring thoughts into captivity. Yesterday I used the analogy of uh, self-control talking about if I had a murderous thought, should I execute that thought, right? <laughs> Obviously that's extreme. That's the extreme case. So I should take that thought into captivity. But it's all the way down to even thoughts of indifference. If I'm thinking indifferently about someone, I can go onto my Facebook page and, and, and look at some of the conversations that I've had or friends have had and we begin to be indifferent about somebody making a comparison about them, uh, about them compared to somebody else or uh, what they're doing or what they should be doing or what I don't like about them or... And so those are thoughts. Those are small little thoughts that should be taken captive. Why? Because the measuring stick or the filter should always be that key foundation of love, right? So a cornerstone of our belief system is rooted in the character and nature of God, which is that root of the characteristics of love. And we talked about that a few days ago. And then it contrasting with the deeds of the flesh and the fruits of the Spirit. So if it's not rooted in love and, and manifesting through the fruits of the Spirit, we need to take it out of our conversation. We need to get rid of it. We need to weigh it. We need to say, hey, this is bad. I need to stop doing that. So bringing thoughts into captivity, Paul writes this in 2 Corinthians 10, 2 through 6. 2 Corinthians 10, 2 through 6. I ask that when I am present, I need not be bold with the confidence with which I propose to be courageous against some who regard us as if we walked according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. We are destroying speculations and every lofty thing raised up against the knowledge of God, and we are taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ, every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. And we are ready to punish all disobedience whenever your obedience is complete. In fact, chapter four of the book of James warns us about what can happen if we continue to entertain poor thoughts that leads to worldliness. This is speaking to believers who may not even perceive they are worldly who have entertained bad thoughts and begun to act them out, right? James 4, 1 through 12, James 4, 1 through 12 says this. What is the source of quarrels and conflicts among you? Is not the source of your pleasures that wage war in your members? You lust and do not have, so you commit murder. You are envious and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask with wrong motives so that you may spend it on your pleasures. You adulteress. <laughs> wow, <laughs> you adulteresses. That's kind of strong. Do you not know that friendship with the world is hostility toward God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy to God. Or do you think that the scripture speaks to no purpose? He jealously desires the spirit, the Holy Spirit, which he has made to dwell in us. But he gives a greater grace. That's fascinating to me. God desires his own spirit that dwells within us. That's just, I don't know, I, I, it, that's baffling to me. He's desiring he's, his spirit. He's placed within us, so he's jealous for that. So it, it goes on, right? I read this. He is jealous. His, he jealously desires the spirit which he has made to dwell in us, but he gives a greater grace. Therefore, it says, God is opposed to the proud, but gives grace to the humble. 
Those thoughts come out of pride. They come out of the ego, the id, the self, the center of the human, the human mind, the humanity or human mind. So thinking is important to grab every thought and bring it into captivity. James goes on, submit therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be miserable, and mourn, and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning, and your joy into gloom. Humble yourselves in the presence of the Lord, and he will exalt you. Do not, do not speak against one another. <laughs> that happens a lot especially in social media. Do not speak against one another, brethren. He who speaks against a brother or judges his brother speaks against the law and judges the law. But if you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law, but a judge of it. There is only one lawgiver and judge, the one who is able to save and to destroy. But who are you who judge your neighbor? Hmm. Some strong words. David, in the psalm, in Psalm 19, he writes this. In Psalm 19, 13 through 14, he writes this. Also keep back your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not rule over me. Then I will be blameless, and I shall be acquitted of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. The meditation, the meditation, those thoughts, those things that are coming not only out of my mind, but out of my heart. Psalm 51.6 says, Behold, you desire truth in the innermost being, mind, heart, inside here. You desire truth in the innermost being, and in the hidden part you will make me know wisdom. Wow, grabbing every thought captive, bringing it under Christ. God is jealous for the spirit that is within us, his Holy Spirit. The flesh wars against his Holy Spirit. We are one with him, he in us, us in him. We are one. And yet sometimes our thought process wars against his spirit. Wow. Not only is it important to exhibit and walk in the fruits of the spirit, that those are manifesting from our lives, self-control, but before we ever get to that point, we're to take every single thought into captivity. Food for thought. Let's pray. Father God, Abba Father, forgive me of my sins. Forgive us of our sins. Forgive us of those indifferent thoughts, those small thoughts, those hurtful thoughts, those judgmental or condemning or comparative thoughts that we speak or we write about someone uh, or we speak or we write about someone uh, knowing that they're not in the room, that we wouldn't say those things or write those things if they were present, Lord. Forgive us of those times, Lord. Forgive us of the small thoughts, the bad thoughts, Lord. Father, we ask you to give us, Holy Spirit, give us the strength to take everything into captivity, every thought into captivity, so that we can walk in self-control. Bless this time. Bless these people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a wonderful day. Be very, very blessed.